Getting personal with the big fundamental has never been an easy thing, but we finally did it. We finally cracked the case of Tim Duncan's family. Here's all you need to know about the Duncan family. You know how Tim likes to live a private life? Well, he picked it up from his father, William Duncan. William once said, quote, I don't go out looking for the spotlight, but if someone wants to talk to me, I won't be rude to anybody. This is why almost every detail about him and his wife seem classified, like they are some kind of assets to the CIA. But we know he is a native of Angola in the Eastern Caribbean. He was a man who taught self-reliance in his home, but who also practiced what he preached. As far as we can tell, he was a jack of all trades. He was a mason and had partially built their home in Virgin Islands. He was also a fisherman and he sold lottery tickets in St. Crow until he retired. But as versatile as he was, he had no idea what basketball was. But what he was able to teach Tim Duncan stayed with him for life. Lessons about hard work, dedication, and the importance of family, which Tim always acknowledges him for. William died at the age of 71 in 2002 after a long illness in North Carolina. Tim and the San Antonio Spurs were leading 2-1 against the Seattle Supersonics and was preparing for game four when he heard the terrible news. He had to quit the playoffs to go back home to bury his dad. The death had come with a tinge of coincidence just like Tim's mother's. His father had died on the 29th of April, which is just four days after Tim's 26th birthday, whereas Tim's mother had died a day before his 14th birthday. Seems odd, right? Anyway, William was survived by four children, including Tim from the same woman, Eon Duncan. Eon Duncan was in a class of her own. She was a very supportive and caring mother who was dedicated to seeing her kids be the best that they could. When Duncan was still only interested in swimming, that is way before basketball caught his fancy, it was Eon who was his biggest fan. She had attended every swimming experience that Tim and his sister had participated in. She would yell and cheer from where she sat in the stands, and when they were out of the Olympic-sized pool, she would be there to dry them off. Trisha spoke about how she would scream at the top of her voice. Timmy, Trissy, it was so embarrassing. Now we would give anything to have that embarrassment, she said. She would also volunteer to be a timer and would repeat her favorite motto to them, which Tim Duncan still recites today. She would say, quote, Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. End quote. This was the kind of way she raised her children, a strong work ethic that stayed with Tim for the rest of his life. Even when Hurricane Hugo ravaged St. Crow in 1989 and the pool where they swam was sadly destroyed, he found another sport to channel all the qualities his mom taught him. But Eon did not only limit her love and care to the Duncan family alone, she also extended it to the Juan F. Louis Hospital in and medical center where she worked as a midwife. Unfortunately, when it came time for her to be taken care of when she was sick, not even drugs could help. She got diagnosed with breast cancer, which took her life when Duncan was supposed to be celebrating his 14th birthday. When Eon was on her deathbed, she made her sons and daughters promise that they would finish college before going into sports. The power forward legend, in his part, did just that. Tim also became a major donor for the Juan Louis Hospital, and in return, they named a hallway after his mother. The Delicia Eon Duncan Hall, as it's called, holds medical records and executive suites. In the ceremony that honored Eon Duncan, the interim CEO of the hospital, Dima Williams, praised her. Quote, We honor Delicia Eon Duncan, who during her time at JFL served as a dedicated midwife. Naming this hall for Mrs. Duncan will undoubtedly make her impact known to all who walk in it. We thank her for being a team member here with us, and it is such a pleasure to pay tribute to her and her memory. End quote. When Tim received his Hall of Fame honor, he thanked his mom and dad for their teachings after joking about them not having any idea about basketball. But if basketball wasn't introduced to Tim by his parents, who did introduce him to it? Well, that person would have to be Ricky Lowry. Ricky Lowry is Tim Duncan's brother-in-law married to Tim's elder sister, Cheryl. Ricky got to be a vital part of the legend's life when his wife had to move down to the island from the United States where she was studying nursing in order to be home for the family after the loss of their mother. Ricky had moved down with her. He was a basketball player himself who had played basketball at the Division III level at Capital University, Ohio. He wore the number 21, the same number of course that Tim chose to wear later in his career. He taught Duncan the basics of basketball, brushing up his skills in ball handling, court awareness, and parental 
perimeter scoring. He made him scout ready, and the coach of Wake Forest, Dave Odom, was soon very impressed. This was how Ricky had set up Tim for greatness. Another person that was like family to Tim and set him up for greatness in his own part was Greg Popovich. Pop, of course, needs no introduction, but what you might not know about him is that he was more or less a father figure to the Hall of Fame power forward, and this was probably because of the promise he had made to Tim Duncan's father before he had died. Quote, I can still remember before his father passed away, him looking at me in the eye and saying, I'm going to hold you responsible to make sure that when he's done, he's the same person that he is now. In that respect, he is. He's grown as a person, as we all do through experiences, but his inner core, he was over himself when he came in, and after all these accolades and all the success, he's still gotten over himself. Hasn't changed a lick. End quote. Pop so played the role of father to Duncan that he would usually buy him carrot cake and leave it outside his hotel room whenever they were on the road. He did this because he knew Duncan loved it. No doubt their bond had influenced Duncan's decision to play his entire 19-year career with the San Antonio Spurs. It's no wonder why they could have moments like this. The chemistry and love they share was quite evident. It's the type you would usually find amongst family members. And hey, as far as family members go, Duncan's siblings have tried to keep a low profile too, but their careers have forced them into the limelight just a bit. Stay tuned. Tim's elder and only brother, Scott Duncan, is a cinematographer, producer, director, and executive producer. He was the cinematographer for movies such as Toba, Jordan Rides the Bus, King's Ransom, and First Descent. He has also produced movies such as the documentary Yo So Nador, uh, I Bring What I Love. All his filmmaking adventures have made him work with celebrities like Donald Trump, Martha Stewart, and Sean Bon Jovi. He has also worked with the Spurs Association, Draft FCB, McCann Worldwide, Averett Free Ginsburg, The World Cup, NBC Sports, CBS Sports, ESPN, and The Olympics. Tim is not the only one that has lived up to fulfill the mantra taught by their mother. While Tim Garner so many accolades in the NBA. In the film industry, Scott has also done quite well for himself as he has won over 16 Emmy Awards out of 34 nominations. Patricia Duncan, or Trisha like she has been popularly called, was born on the 21st of August, 1973. She's actually an Olympian and had swam in the 1988 Summer Olympics where she had finished 34th place in the 100 meters backstroke and in 30th place in the 200 meters backstroke. She was one of the first inspirations to Tim who wanted to be an Olympian himself until Hurricane Hugo shattered his dreams. She then went to Swarthmore College and fell off the radar. Another person that fell off the radar was their eldest sister, Cheryl. Cheryl is the big sister among Tim's siblings. Growing up, she had also been a championship swimmer in her own right, but later went to college to study nursing. She was the one who had to quit her studies to help out the family when their mother died. Not much is known about her beyond these few details, but as for Duncan's love interests, there is quite a lot of detail which are actually sad, scary, but beautiful. Duncan's first love interest was Amy. Amy Duncan was born in 1977 in North Carolina to Judy and Fred Sherrill. She attended Wake Forest University, and it was during her time there as a cheerleader that she had met Tim Duncan. The two began dating in 1992. They married in July 2001 and had two kids a daughter named Sydney in 2005, and a son named Draven in 2007. After Amy finished college, she started working as the chairman of Tim Duncan's charitable foundation. Amy recalled in an interview years ago about how nervous she had been when Tim left her to play pro basketball for the San Antonio Spurs, but she said he was calling her four to five times every day just to reassure her and keep the fire of their love blazing hot. Quote, I was still in college and we had those first couple of months when I was convinced you were going off to do bad things, Amy says. Then all the uncertainties went away and you did that for me by calling and reassuring me that you weren't. You weren't out there doing bad things. You rekindled that belief, end quote. They were the kind of couple that were seemingly in for it for the long haul, the kind that finished each other's sentences, and as a matter of fact, they did finish each other's sentences, at least Amy did for Tim. For example, there was this cute moment that happened some time ago. Sports Illustrated was interviewing the couple, and a question was thrown to Tim about whether winning the NBA championship was everything it was supposed to be, and the big fundamental answered, quote, yeah, it is, but it's a little miscon... 
skewed? Miscon... So Amy quickly helped him out by saying misconstrued, and then he repeated the correct word. No shame or bashfulness, just two people in love, apparently. But then, many years later, it all became an unfortunate disaster. The couple announced their divorce in 2013 after 12 years of marriage. Aside from Duncan coming out to say he wanted their prenup enforced, the divorce proceedings were never made public. But a lot of sources gave reasons as to why the supposed loving couple were calling it quits all of a sudden. Some of the sources cited infidelity from both parties. It was alleged that Amy had accused him for being gay, while Tim had accused Amy of sleeping around with different men, including her personal trainer. And what's even worse, TMZ Sports leaked files that revealed that Sidney and Draven are not actually his kids. It was revealed that their father is most likely Robert Horry, the former Spurs player who Duncan was hardly ever on good terms with. Nevertheless, Duncan still remains a loving father to Sidney and Draven. After their fiery divorce, Tim went back to the dating scene once again and soon found himself with the beautiful Vanessa Macias. Vanessa was born in San Antonio, Texas on August 14th, 1980 to Joe and Gloria Garcia. She attended San Antonio College, then interned with Don Harris's San Antonio High School Sports Show as a reporter before making the transition to the University of North Texas. After her graduation, she became a freelance writer and a radio personality. In that position, she has anchored travel shows like Me, Texas, and Vamos. She has also had a few moments on TV by appearing on the reality TV shows The Amazing Race and Urban Jungle 2. She has also appeared on CBS and anchored for other TV and radio outlets. Outlets. She and Duncan started dating in 2013, soon after his divorce was finalized. Duncan confirmed during a show with RJ and Shanning on road tripping that he and Vanessa have welcomed a baby and named her Quill after the Marvel character in Guardians of the Galaxy, Peter Quill. They are yet to marry, but rumors say that they were recently engaged. As for Duncan's three kids, not much is known about them except for their presence in the games and press conferences their father attends. If you've enjoyed the bittersweet story of Tim Duncan's family, you'll surely enjoy this next one. Make sure to like the video and subscribe for more.